kits, as well as hosted Facebook Live community drive-in brunches, connecting the family to more than $20 million in state and federal funding for assistance with utility bills, as well as with the Legal Aid and Defender Association for legal representation and assistance with rental and eviction assistance. We have also held cold red community conversations with Detroit City Clerk Janice Winfrey and Don Calloway of the National Voter Protection Action Fund, as well as with U.S. Senator Gary Peters. Pastor Kellogg held a powerful conversation with Dr. Michael Eric Dyson concerning the climate of our country and the concerns of our community. But we're not done yet. Continuing this weekend, it's another Code Red Community Conversation this Sunday at 6 p.m. Pastor Solomon W. Kinlock Jr. will be joined by NAACP President Derek Johnson and Professor and Author Dr. Mark Lamont Hill for a critical conversation. Text, email, and inbox your family and friends to join us on Facebook this Sunday at 6 p.m. On Tuesdays, Pastor Kinlock teaches a life-inspiring word at our 12 p.m. noon and 6.30 p.m. Bible study. It's time to refill and refuel. It's an opportunity you don't want to miss. Later this week, we are hosting another crisis care community giveaway at our East Campus. Register right now at triumphch.org. Do you or someone you know need COVID-19 testing? Through our partnership with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, free testing is available at our central campus. Visit our website to find out how to schedule an appointment for you or your family. Visit triumphch.org to stay in the know and register for any of these events or ministry programs. from your cars, watching at home. Good Sunday morning. We are all together. We are all together. And you know, these times I know, Pastor, make us feel we, we're supposed to be isolated and standing at least six feet apart and wearing masks so we can only see half of somebody's face. But let's always remember. Let's always remember we are all together and we are all God's children. And we are going to get through this together. So, I know this isn't how we usually do church, um, but it is a reminder, Pastor, that faith always finds its way. And we need to always feel the grace of God and to be at church, even if it's in our car or at home. And so that's what we do. And don't we all especially need church right now? The feeling of togetherness that comes with being a part of a community a place where we can express our fidelity to one another and our service to all God's children. For me, church has always been a source of strength and a place for reflection, a place to study, yes, the teachings of our Lord, and a place to feel grounded in a world that feels increasingly complex. And needless to say, here in 2020, the world is plenty complex, from the pandemic to the recession, to historic wildfires and floods, and of course, the long overdue reckoning on racial injustice in America. And things certainly aren't easy right now. So many of us are carrying burdens that are seen and unseen by others. So many of us are spending time in reflection and prayer these days. And in my private conversations with God, 
I usually ask for strength and protection and guidance to do the right thing. And this is a time indeed to draw on the values of our faith, love and kindness, honesty and truth, not only as individuals, but as a community and as a country. When he still was a doctoral student at Boston University, and Pastor talked about him earlier, Dr. Martin Luther King told a group of parishioners, he said, the real problem is that through our scientific genius, we've made the world a neighborhood, but through our moral and spiritual genius, we have failed to make it a brotherhood. So let's think about that. With all the callousness and cruelty that we've recently seen around us, would anyone deny that Dr. King's words ring true today? When babies have been separated from their mothers, when we desecrate the planet that God has entrusted to us, when in the wealthiest country in the world, we allow millions of children to go hungry when we fear for the lives of our black babies as they grow simply because of the color of their skin. We're all in a lot of pain right now for all of these reasons, and especially as a community. But I think what the past few months and these last few years have taught us is that we have no choice but to heed the teachings and the words of Dr. King. And if we are serious about making our world a brotherhood and sisterhood, then our faith cannot remain just a matter of personal sustenance. It can't be only about our personal needs. Our faith must present a challenge for us to think about how we live among and treat others. Our faith, I do believe, and I was raised this way, must be a verb. We must live it in our actions. And as the great Fannie Lou Hamer once said, you can pray until you faint, but if you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. So that's the kind of faith I was taught early on, Pastor. And I can still remember sitting with my sister Maya in our Sunday best at 23rd Avenue Church of God in Oakland, California. And, and, and praising the Word and our Lord, but understanding that when we left church, we were expected to live and put in action the teachings. And my earliest memories of the Bible's teachings we're of a loving God, a God who asks us to stand up and serve for others, especially those who are in need, the least of these, especially those who are outside of the rooms of power but belong in those rooms. Our loving God wants us to speak up for the voiceless, care for the needy, and seek justice for the oppressed. He asks us to see each other as he sees us. In fact, you know, in many African countries, when you meet someone for the first time, the greeting is not pleased to meet you. The greeting is, I see you. I see you in all that you are. And I do believe God wants right now for us to see each other. And I do believe at the most basic level that is what it means to live our faith. And even in this moment of trial and testing, as I look out at this congregation and I travel around the country, I see people who are rising to this moment. I see people who are filled with strength and with purpose healthcare workers, truck drivers, grocery store clerks, caregivers, teachers, 
postal workers and poll workers, people who reject the notion that we cannot control this virus. People who know in a moment of crisis, real leaders step up and figure out their place to support and to help others and to alleviate pain and suffering. That is the sign of true leadership. And people who understand, as the Good Samaritan teaches us, that we must look out for our neighbors and we must understand our neighbor is not just the person who shares the zip code with us, not just the person who drives the same kind of car we do, not just the person who has the, their children at the same school our children are. Our neighbor includes that stranger by the side of the road. And understanding then that if we are to live God's purpose for us, we must see that person by the side of the road and in their face see a neighbor. So, let us rejoice in the people of all faiths who, living that word, swarmed to airports to protest the ban against our Muslim brothers and sisters. Let us celebrate the people of all races who took to the streets to say yes, Black Lives Matter. The people who have taken to the streets when there are those who want to take away health care and Obamacare and have traveled the country saying, see my sick child and understand to love thy neighbor is to love my child and to understand their right to access to health care. This is how people are stepping up and speaking out all over our country. And so yes, as Dr. King said, our moral genius may be lagging behind our scientific genius. And yes, we still have a lot of work to do to build that brotherhood and sisterhood, to build that beloved community. And yet, we will get there. We are getting there. And we will get there. So long as we keep working and fighting for the ideals we hold dear, born out of our faith, so long as we keep rejecting the forces that would divide us, and so long as we keep doing what we are doing here today and drawing closer together, even from a distance. And so long as we keep holding on to our faith, for we walk with faith, not by sight, so thank you all so very much for welcoming me today. Pastor, thank you, thank you, and the First Family for all of the love that you have given me and this community. And, um, and thank you, everyone, for your prayers. Um, I feel them every day. God bless.